gospel text for today, Jesus talks about thieves and robbers. And so let me ask you a question. Have you ever been a victim of a crime, specifically involving theft of any kind? And you might say, no, I haven't been. But, you know, think about things like uh, somebody stole your credit card number or something like that and used it. So there's, it's pretty common. And there's all kinds of uh, ways of stealing something. And uh, I pulled out some, something just from the North Carolina General Statutes because we have all kinds of words to describe stealing. We got embezzlement, forgery, obtaining property by false pretense, fraud, larceny, identity theft, and all kinds of different things. And all those crimes, all those types of theft have a, a very degree of impact on their victims, on you. Now, some of them are a lot more devastating. Like if somebody breaks into your vehicle or if somebody breaks into your home or even worse yet, robbery, that's the most dangerous. That's the most devastating and threatening. Now, even if you yourself were never a victim of such a crime, you can understand the feeling. When it happens to you, it leaves you with this repulsive feeling of being violated in your most intimate areas, your home, your person, you feel victimized. You feel that somebody has taken advantage of you. You feel un exposed and vulnerable and unsafe. And you know that whoever done this to you, broken into your home, or robbed you, they had no regard for you as a person, for your physical and your emotional well-being. And when things like that occur, we had just this, not too long ago, a member of my, our congregation, St. John's, I was visiting her, and she was telling me that in the middle of the night, somebody was breaking into her home. And she called the police and they came out. But uh, by the time the police came, that person already broke through the window and was going through the house. And as a result of that, she decided that she was going to install the latest alarm system. And this is what it does to you. And something like that happens to you. Yeah, you call the police and uh, you hope that uh, whoever did this to you is going to get the right punishment. And uh, at the same time, even if that person is caught, you, you still feel unsafe. And you, you, do, you, you try to do something like, you know, get the latest alarm with all the videos and, and you install better locks and, uh, and maybe you get a, a gun. I don't know. But the point is, is that you can't really go back to how it used to be, okay? Once somebody breaks into your house, once a thief or a robber victimizes you, Everything changes. You have doubts about your safety. You have more anxiety and more stress. And none of this is welcome or invited. But that's what thieves and robbers do. They could care less about how you feel. They don't care about how down the road it's going to affect you for the rest of your life. They break in and steal and rob and leave you devastated and they don't care. And that's what Jesus is trying to communicate to us. 
Jesus uses this imagery of thieves and robbers. And when the people in the gospel text, his audience, hear about those thieves and robbers, they know what he's talking about, just like we know what he's talking about, even though it's a different time, different place, different culture, but the same impact. Thieves and robbers, they always done the same thing. They've always taken advantage of the vulnerable, and they don't care about the devastation that they cause. Truly, truly, Jesus says, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. And then down below in verse 8, he says, all who came before me are thieves and robbers. And he also calls them strangers. And the Greek can also be translated as enemies. And the hearers of Christ back then would have the same reaction as we do now. They could easily identify themselves with being a victim of theft or robbery and the damage that they cause being violated and your property in person, being victimized, being taken advantage of, vulnerable and exposed and feeling unsafe and anxious and stressed out. And they know that thieves and robbers, they don't care. That doesn't even come into play with people like that. Thieves and robbers, they, they could care less about how it makes anybody feel what it does to them. And the root of the Greek for thief is klepto. You know, we have uh, kleptomaniac, right? Someone who can't help but steal. And you have the commandment, thou shalt not steal. Stealing is a sin, we know that. But such is the power of sin. We as sinful beings, we can't help but sin. And that's what sin does. It breaks into our lives. It violates us. It makes us a victim. It takes advantage of our weakness. It makes us vulnerable and exposed and anxious and stressed out. In this specific instance in John 10, Jesus is talking about false teachers, the religious leaders, the Pharisees, who instead of feeding the sheep with the purity of God's word and protecting the sheepfold from their enemies, what are the enemies? Fears and doubts about God's love, about his provision, about forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Instead of doing that, they take advantage of the sheep and even put more doubts and more fears into people's hearts. Why? Well, because that's what thieves do. They don't care. They just look out for themselves. But, as the text points out in verse 6, it is a, quote, figure of speech. While in a narrow sense, it is about the false teachers and their false teachings. In a broader sense, it is about all the false teaching about God. It is about every sinful and evil thought, fear, doubt, and craving that breaks into your heart and mind and takes advantage of you. Now, think about what robs you of your sense of joy and hope and confidence and peace and faith? What steals your sense of security? What makes you fear the future? 
Maybe right now what you're facing is a congregation. Maybe that causes you uncertainty. Maybe it's something in your personal life. Maybe it's your financial situation. Or maybe it's your health that you're concerned about. Maybe it's not your health. Maybe it's a condition of your loved one's health. And in the midst of anxieties like that, a thought might creep in. Does God care about me? Will he provide for my needs? Now you can try to build those walls of positive thinking. You can say to yourself, you know, everything is going to be okay. Everything is going to work out. But the fear and the questions and the doubts just like those thieves to find their way in, okay? Because that's what they do. Only to steal and destroy your confidence and hope, breaking and entering into your thoughts, making you anxious, stressed out, robbing you of rest and sleep. We're no match for the forces of sin and evil. And that's why Jesus gives us himself. The main theme of the gospel text really for today is Christ telling us that he is a complete opposite of a thief and a robber. He does not break in. He does not climb over or sneak in in a dishonest way. He enters through the doors as an honest guest. He doesn't threaten you and force you with his violent demands or abusive commands that make you want to flee and run away and hide. Instead, he speaks to you with a voice that you want to listen to and follow him voluntarily. In summary, he says in verse 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they, that is you and it is me, may have life and have it abundantly. Jesus does not force himself upon you. He does not break in and violate and take advantage of you and leave you victimized and exposed and vulnerable the way that sin does. Because God is the opposite of the kleptomaniac who can't help but steal and destroy. Instead, Jesus can't help but give and restore. In your baptism, you have walked through the door that leads to life. When Peter talks about baptism, he compares the baptism with the flood. And he talks about Noah. He says that just like Noah entered through the door of the ark, to be, safe, to be safe from death. So have you walked through the ark of the church to be saved in your baptism? Your Lord called you by your name. Your salvation is assured. Therefore you have no doubt. You have no fear. In the words of the absolution, your pastor is the voice of Christ announcing to you the forgiveness of sins, all of your sins. You leave the church and are led out by the Lord who goes with you 
And you leave knowing that you have been forgiven. And no one can steal this confidence away from you. At the Lord's table, Christ opens the door of heaven as he comes to you in a bodily presence. You commune with him and with one another and with the church on the other side of the altar. With the angels and the archangels and the company of heaven. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. You are saved. You are safe. You have entered the kingdom of God. Because all of your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.